Okay, I'd like to do a demonstration called energetic light. It's a chemiluminescence demonstration. Chemiluminescence means the production of light from a chemical reaction. This integrates a little bit physical science and uh, chemistry because in physical science, you, uh, one of the very first things you talk about is conservation of energy. So if we wanna, what kind of energy do we conserve in chemical reactions? Well, it's chemical energy. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna co convert chemical energy from the mixing in, on a chemical reaction, we're gonna convert that chemical energy into light energy. And so what I'm gonna do is just mix the reagents, we'll demonstrate it, and then we'll talk about some of the principles after we've had a chance, hopefully, to ooh and ah a little bit over the uh, chemiluminescence that's produced. Now, the first solution that I want to measure and pour here is what we call our energetic light solution. And this is a mixture. And I want about 140 milliliters of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour. And you can see that that's an orange, little bit of a viscous liquid there. And again, I want about 140 milliliters. So I need to look here at what I'm doing just briefly. And that's almost exactly 140 milliliters. Now, I am wearing gloves. This solution contains uh, sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate. It's a very basic solution. It also contains luminol, which is the chemiluminescent chemical, if you will. It's the one that undergoes the chemical reaction that produces uh, the chemical energy. And it also has a couple of other fluorescent dyes in it. It has some fluorescein, which is probably the most well-known fluorescent dye. And it also has something called calcine or fluorexon. It goes by a couple of uh, different names. And those are both the fluorescein and the calcine are fluorescent dyes. And what they're going to do is they're going to absorb some of the light energy that's initially produced by the luminol. And the other two solutions that I have are some potassium ferrocyanide. That's going to be the catalyst in this reaction. And I also need 140 milliliters of that. And that's a yellow solution, which is the, just the color of the uh, ferrocyanide ion. And again, I need about 140 milliliters and a little bit more there. Actually, I'm going to get a dropper and add just a little bit more at the end there. This one, it's not absolutely critical, but I think you do get a little bit of a better uh, reaction if you have the exact amounts that you want. And I need just a little bit more than I have in there. Just a little bit more there. <laughs> I always say just a little bit more. So let's, let's do that. Let's get 140 milliliters. That's pretty good. The other one I got immediately, right away. But that, that gives us, that's the potassium ferrocyanide. Now, the other main reactant in this chemical reaction that we're going to do is the hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, of course, is a very well-known oxidizing agent. This is just 3%, which is just the, uh, you know, the drugstore hydrogen peroxide that you could buy there. And I want about 14 milliliters of this. So I'm going to add... And then I'll probably do the last amount with another um, Burrell pipette here. We want to measure and add 14 milliliters. And that's pretty good. Okay. Again, it's not absolutely critical, but it's always good. And this one, I think you get better results if you're close. Now, what we're going to do first is the hydrogen peroxide. And again, I had about 14 milliliters of that and about 140 milliliters of the potassium ferrocyanide. And I mix those. And what I'm going to do is pour my, what we called our energetic light solution. Now, this is the main player here because this is the one that contains the luminol. And I'm simply going to add that to the beaker. You can see it's a really kind of a viscous liquid. I do have gloves on. This is a, a pretty basic solution. It's caustic. So I'm going to put that on the side. 
What I'm going to do is add the hydrogen peroxide and the potassium ferrocyanide solution to the energetic light solution. I'm going to stir it, and then immediately we want to do the lights off because we want to see if we've been able to convert some chemical energy to light energy. So I'm going to pour. Let's stir, and if we can get the lights off there. And immediately, very good glow there, a bright yellow glow. If you can see that well in the audience. And again, that's the chemiluminescence. Let's stir it just a little bit more just to see if, if that la makes it last a little longer. It looks a lot like the glow-in-the-dark color that you see. So what happened there? What produces that light energy? Well, what happens is you have hydrogen peroxide, a well-known oxidizing agent, which oxidizes the luminol. Very, very small amount of luminol is used. I think it's like 0.1 grams in a liter. I mean, it's a very dilute solution of luminol, but it produces a lot of light energy. The luminol is oxidized by the hydrogen peroxide in basic solution with a catalyst. But some of the chemical energy actually uh, is used to excite electrons in the product of the luminol oxidation to an excited state. So we pre produce the products, but one of them, the, luminol, the oxidation product of luminol, is produced in an excited state. So what does that excited state electron want naturally to do? It wants naturally to, what we say, relax back down to the ground state. And when an energy in an excited, when an electron in an excited energy level drops back down to the ground state, it releases light. It releases a photon of light. And that's the emission of light that we see. Notice that that's not a clear or a transparent color that we're seeing. Normally, if you look at a solution in visible light, it appears transparent. This one actually appears translucent, and that's because you're not seeing light go through it. The light is produced within that solution and is emitted. So we have the emission of light as a result of a chemical reaction. One of the advantages of this particular demonstration of chemiluminescence is that that light emission is relatively long-lived. If you just use luminol and, an oxid and the hydrogen peroxide and the catalyst, the, you get instantaneous light that's produced, but then it dissipates almost immediately. Immediately. Here, several things are prolonging the emission of life, and they have mainly to do with those fluorescent dyes that I told you about. That also changes the color of the emission, because what happens is the fluorescein and the calcine absorb some of the visible energy produced in that e emission of that excited state electron, and it then that then emits a color, a different color of light that then fluoresces. So again, in uh, the light, we have just an orange solution. You can see a tiny bit kind of, of yellow around the top there. But at the, if you go back, and let's see if, can we take the lights down once more and see if we're still going to get any emission of light there? Not much. It's pretty much gone. But that's a long time for chemiluminescence. So we call that energetic light chemiluminescence demonstration. It's a nice right way to do it. There's a lot of different things that are tied in there, and you can talk a lot about those. But at the end, you know what? It's just a fun chemical reaction, too. And so there's always room for one of those in your chemistry class.